Hi everyone, welcome back to Tactical Thursday. Today we're gonna to be talking about getting over imposter syndrome. So John David, how do you deal with imposter <laughs> syndrome? Well, Elizabeth, I don't deal with it. Okay. Because I have the opposite problem, which is I get full of myself and I have delusions of grandeur. That's kind of a nice problem to have. Well, I would say that that's like, that's like a macro personality trait I have. Like mm -hmm. I'm very optimistic and I'm very like, sure-footed like I like I I think I can kind of get things done and then sometimes I get myself in situations that are just ill thought out mm. so there are downsides to the opposite of imposter syndrome but on like a more micro specific level I did deal with imposter syndrome from a public speaking standpoint. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not very good up in front of an audience. Really? But you're so good on <laughs> camera. <laughs> I've been doing this for like, what is it, a year, year and a half now? Yeah. So it's just get, getting those reps in. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the best ways to get over imposter syndrome is kind of like exposure therapy, mm -hmm. right? Like you just start doing it more and then you slowly start to expand out your comfort zone. Right. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, I think public speaking is probably the number one fear in America, and people are terrified to do it. And it's something that I probably six years ago was really worried about, and now I do it and make money doing it. So I think the only reason that I can do it now is because I've just exposed myself to it so much and done it so many times that now I feel comfortable doing it. Right. It just gets it's almost like running. Like it just gets a little bit easier the longer you do it. Right. But to pit this conversation specifically within like the audience's um, kind of worldview, talking about how imposter syndrome plugs into getting your next or your first analytics job. Mm -hmm. um, you might be intimidated by your manager or by your manager's manager or the CEO of the company. Right. But I have a specific tactical thought exercise that you guys can run through, which is think back to your parents mm -hmm. and think about your parents' relationships to things like this. Right. I'm pointing to a computer for those of you guys who are just listening to the podcast. Um, you know, our parents are... I don't know if developmentally challenged <laughs> is the right way to phrase that, but they cannot use technology. Mm -hmm. And that same concept applies to your manager or the CEO. Unless you're working at like a startup or like, you know, a Silicon Valley company, your manager or your, you know, upper management, they're not going to know data. And specifically, if you own your own data sources, so if you do sales analytics, if you know the sales data source inside and out, you are like a valuable, valuable resource. Mm -hmm. I'm actually running through this right now with one of my clients. So COVID hit, knocked you know this company pretty much down and out, and they let go of their sales analyst. So now as their consultant coming in trying to wrangle all their data, mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going on in terms of their sales data structure. Right. So if you think about it like that, you should be intimidating them. So if they're like pushing back on, hey, you know this this forecast or this line chart looks wrong, you'd be like, look, you don't know anything about this. I am the sales analytics or the sales analytics expert here. <laughs> right. Well, and I think you're right uh, that people in this space have skills that no one else has. I mean, mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is if you are an analyst, if you're a data scientist, you have some technical skills that probably not many other people in the company or even in the world have those specific skills. I mean, that's a niche population of people. And so you're right, you are the expert here. And I do think your example of our parents' generation is yeah. really funny, because you're right. I mean, my parents ask me all the time about how to use technology. So that, I think that applies. I was actually asked that by Kirill from Super Data Science when I came on their podcast. Mm -hmm. they, he asked me, he's like, well, you're talking to CEO, CMO, CFOs on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, they have no idea about data. Right. And, then, and it's weird because I'm coming in and I'm advising, I sound like so fancy, <laughs> I'm advising C-suite executives, but it's true because mm -hmm. they don't know about this one specific area. Mm -hmm. So if you can build that expertise and that specific knowledge of this is the data I work with and I know it like the back of my hand, mm -hmm. then you should, I mean, Theoretically, you should get over your imposter syndrome. Right. I mean, two things, yeah, are the practice and, of course, practicing the skills that you need. But then the second thing is, you're right, these folks who are our audience are experts. You guys are. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And the third thing I would add to this is I think everybody struggles with imposter syndrome at some point in mm -hmm. their life. And I think that especially in the first few months on a job, especially in this climate, 
right now where a lot of uh, virtual work is happening, so you're not even getting to meet people face to face, that certainly can be tough. But I do think the more practice that you have in the role, the more that you practice your technical skills by taking an ongoing course, for example, mm -hmm. the more that you um, show up as an analyst, the better that you're going to be at this. And quite frankly, you guys are experts. Yeah, so taking it back to that analogy of public speaking, which everyone has just about. Mm -hmm. So if, if we're going to make an analogy to that, the first thing is to know your speech. Mm -hmm. Practice it over and over again, yep. and then just do it more. So get more comfortable doing analytics work, and don't force, don't force it. It's going to take time for you to kind of like build up. Because if you come in hot, and you're like, I know what's going on. I'm telling the C-suite executive what he should be doing. You're going to look like an idiot. Well, and this <laughs> goes back to an episode we talked about mm -hmm. on Tactical Thursday a few weeks ago, which is, yes, you can come in with some expertise, but day one, I probably wouldn't go in there and shake things completely right, out and right. say, here are yeah. all the things that you want you should be doing. But you certainly want to become somebody who's indisposable for your manager or for higher level folks. And so, yeah, I think the more that you do this work, the better you'll feel about it and the better you'll feel with imposter syndrome. So, hot take. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, thank you for tuning in to Tactical Thursday. We will see you next week.